This is GTA Online. A game about doing crime and becoming filthy rich doing so. But what if we take the grand theft out of the auto? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to answer the frozen solid question no one has ever asked. Can you make a million dollars in GTA Online without breaking a single law? But before we dive into the spicy chicken katsu, we need to go over some ground rules. The most important thing you need to know is, what laws are we following? We settled on a mix of actual laws followed in LA, mostly for road laws, and something, well, quite interesting. You see, Los Santos is inhabited by AI, it is policed by AI, and so, if there's any confusion about laws in Los Santos, we'll ask the help of Novel AI. Novel AI is a text-based artificial intelligence text generator which uses computing power to generate somewhat cohesive blah 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 long story short you put in text computer will type out the rest of the story and secondly if there's no in-game way to do certain key things legally we won't consider it as a law in los santos for instance you can't use your blinker in los santos so that is not a law you can't pick up a sprung can after you drank it to throw it away so littering is not a law in los santos thirdly if we get a wanted level the challenge is failed, and we have to start all over. And here we are, fresh off the plane. No money, what? no belongings, no nothing at all. Well, that is not entirely true. You see, I was lazy, and I thought this wouldn't take that long. I didn't feel like creating a brand new character, so I'm just gonna spend every single buck that I had on my main character, which I did, and this turned out to be probably the biggest mistake of the entire challenge. Cause sure, I have a few benefits, like already having a membership to the casino to gamble, I have higher stats amongst a few other things, but you know what I also had? I had already completed some of the most lucrative free mode challenges that would have made me thousands upon thousands of bucks, and I had the hourly bill of all the properties that I owned. And while this was only 800 bucks a pop, this would add up to an astronomical amount over the time this took. But I had what? no money. I had no car. Walking would take an hour with all the traffic lights, so I did what every person would do. Public transport. Show me! Show me which one of you is gonna be a gentleman! Now in Los Santos, you cannot pay for a subway ride, so LS has got free public transport. How progressive! Perfect. Hopped on the subway, headed towards the city. We took this as far as we could, and we went all the way to the heart of the city. And from here, here we would walk, but along the way we find public enemy number one of this challenge, the traffic light. And this devious bastard would only not suck up most time out of anything in this entire challenge, it would also suck the soul right out of my body. But. After 30 minutes, we arrived at the casino. Yes, you heard that correctly. It took half an hour to get from the airport to here. Spin the wheel and there it is. The first 15,000 plus the thousand visitor bonus. And it's time to spend some of this money wisely. We need it. A better form of transportation than the old Akimbo meat sticks. And thus I bought this. But this was a horrible mistake and quite literally added about five hours to this challenge, but not for the glaring issue of top speed. No, more on that later, because now it was time to become Taxi Man. Now, during this time, there was some sort of event ongoing. Complete X amount of taxi missions and you'll get 200,000, which would make up for one-fifth of the entire challenge. On top of that, you'd also get like double money for each completed fare. And doing this, ladies and gentlemen, this challenge, it would be over in no time. That is what you would think. But you want to know the reality? It took just under 20 minutes to do one taxi run. And you know what I made? $416, but maybe the second one will go quicker. 10 minutes, $782. About 45 minutes in and I made a whopping 1900 bucks. Needless to say, this wasn't it. But because of the looming $200,000 that I could win, over time I'd still complete some taxi missions. I was driving up north to do some junk energy skydives. Upon completing all of them, you would receive another $100,000. It's also safe to assume junk energy is like Red Bull, and Red Bull has organized more outrageous things than a simple skydive. So therefore, we believe this is 100% legal. But then, 
a blue dot. A sleeping person. Now you can loot these guys to make some extra money, but that would be illegal. So now it is a perfect time to put novel AI to the test. All right, NPC is sleeping, okay? We're gonna let novel AI decide what happens next. Send. I stood over the sleeping person looking at his belongings. I wanted to take him, but stealing is illegal. But maybe if I ask for his wallet, maybe, just maybe he will give it to me. Hi there, sleeping sir on the ground. Can I please have whatever it is that you have? I said with a sweet voice as I approached him, slowly and gently. <laughs> he opened his eyes slowly, looking around in confusion before seeing me standing over him with an innocent look on my face. Um, <laughs> um hello? He said timidly, starting to stand up. Can I please have your wallet? I asked again as he was just about to pull out his phone. He hesitated, but then gave it to me after a few seconds of hesitation boom win right there and just like that another seven thousand dollars to the pile and now we begin our skydiving adventures so we completed one we completed another one and i was getting tired i've been streaming for roughly three hours at this point so now it's time to do a quick count with the car that i bought included i made a whopping forty-one thousand. i don't know about you but that ain't cutting it for me. We have to ramp this shit up. The next day is here and we are now en route to the casino again. But unfortunately, we were too early and we can't spin the wheel for another three hours. So instead, why not do a cheeky gamba? And boom, just like that, a huge hey. W. In one move, I made half of what I spent three hours on the day before. Beautiful. Now, today was a big day, for we wanted to become a licensed pilot and make a lot of money along the way. Ellis Flight School, here I come. What you get? A key thing of traversing a map. If we can make money along the way, we will. So we did a quick taxi job to work towards those 20 jobs that would give us $200,000. Eventually, we ended up here. And it was here that another debate was sparked. Would it be legal or illegal to freight train hop in Los Santos? Because that would legit be a fantastic way to move around the map relatively quickly, going past all the traffic lights, etc. And what better person to ask that than a random security officer? Surely he knows all about the law. Uh, um, this is what we got. Hello, sir. How are you doing today? I asked the security guard. I had a quick question. You see, my legs are very tired, and I was kind of hoping to jump on the back of a freight train to rest my legs. But can I do that? Or will I get arrested? Because I don't know if it's allowed or not. He looked at me. He didn't understand what I just said. And then he just pulled out his phone, called someone, and talked for about 30 seconds. He put away his phone and then said, Well, you're going to have to go through that gate. I nodded and followed him into the building. It smelled like old dust in there, like an abandoned warehouse or something. The, the, where, where, where is this going? I walked up to the desk where a guy was sitting behind it. He looked up at me as I approached and smiled. His teeth were white, like they had been bleached by some kind of... What the fuck is this establishment? What's going on in this little security boot here? <laughs> I looked at the man with extremely white teeth and asked, Hello, sir. First and foremost, nice teeth. I had a question. Is it legal to jump on a moving freight train? The man smiled wider, leaned forward on his chair and replied with excitement. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, there we fucking go. Great! Apparently this security booth is the hub of a sprawling enterprise, say no more! And so we were on our way. Unfortunately, we went completely the wrong way and we went back where we came from. Jump in the car, head all the way back to LSIA and now it's go time. And the money was rolling in. Another one, another one, another one. Thousands upon thousands, ladies and gentlemen. At the end of all this, we may just under two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that is since we are including the granny wagon we bought as an 8k asset and if we have a car we also need a house and so i bought myself this beautiful 80k love shack i am now a homeowner i have a car the next stop would be a business but what business could we acquire is the question. We are now seven hours in. We made a quarter of the money, but from here on out, things would start getting progressively harder and harder. While we ponder about our next move, it's time for some more taxi missions. In order to make money, 
you gotta spend money. And what better way to spend money than by getting your own business? Now, GTA Online has a lot, and I mean a lot of businesses available that would be great for this challenge if you are a GTA veteran. The thing that pops to mind right away are the nightclub and the auto shop, both great ways to make passive income completely legally. Here's the problem. They all cost over a million dollars to acquire, which by that point, if we can afford one, we would have already completed a challenge. Now, on top of that, we also gotta ask ourselves, can we legally set up a business for it to start generating money? Because a lot of businesses in GTA require you to break the law to set it up. Meanwhile, we notice something about the tax emissions. If you get lucky and you end up in Blaine County, you can complete these missions a lot faster. As you notice, in about 30 minutes, we made a whopping 12,000 bucks. But enough of that. It's time to go to the casino and spin that wheel. And on the way there, we all decided on the perfect business that is legal, doesn't require you to break any laws at all, and on top of that, has the ability to generate passive income and doesn't cost a goddamn fortune. The MC Clubhouse. We just need a little more money to be able to afford one of these bastards. Ladies and gentlemen, I was feeling good and it's time to manifest all that greatness at the casino and a box of B and Q's. At this point, we were $40,000 off, so we were going down to Richard Majestic's and help him return some movie props. First one, easy peasy, another $10,000 to the pile. Going through these movie props one at a time is insanity. These are better done as little side quests, and we can just pick them up as we go. In the meantime, it was brought to my attention that there was another fantastic way to make some money. Apparently, upon the shores of Los Santos, you can occasionally find shipwrecks with hidden treasure chests, so we decided to head up there, pick up the treasure, head to the casino, find the last movie prop we need, and we should have enough money. After 20 minutes, we arrived up north, but then it dawned upon us. Looting, looting right there, is illegal. Stop. But what if we ask permission from the ancient skeleton captain that's guarding his loot? I arrived at the stranded galleon on the beach. Besides it, poking out of the sands was a chest. A chest filled with bountiful booty, riches, gold, trinkets, all sorts. As I was reaching to grab it, an ancient spirit rose from the sand. Yar! Who be reaching for my booty? Yelled the pirate spirit. Oh my god, I replied. Those are some beautiful, white, transparent teeth you got there, Pirate spirit. The spirit took a second to respond. Yar, ye be me old friend, Captain William Turner. <laughs> I said joyfully as I hugged him. Turner left and said, Ah, you know me well enough. You've come back for a booty. No, that's not why I'm here, matey. He looked at me puzzled and said, Then what is it, lad? It's my friend's kid brother. He seemed to be stuck in this place. Can you help him get out? Uh, Turner looked at me with a face full of shock and disbelief. Your friend's brother is stuck in the boosters. The boosters? Surely not, he exclaimed. I nodded, yeah, man. <sighs> That's what I thought too. But you know what? Maybe if I use the riches from the booty in the sand beside you, maybe I can free our friend, I said. How about I take the treasure, I asked the pirate. Turner considered for a minute and said, No, nah, lad, it'd be just fine if you go ahead and make up with the booty. I smiled and told him, I'll remember. Don't you worry, mate. Perfect. Now we headed to the casino. Boom, turned it in and that put us up to $212,000 in the bank. Enough to buy the $210,000 clubhouse. And ladies and gentlemen, I was feeling good. Today started great, but it would soon turn very, very sour. First up, we completed part of the taxi challenge. Boom, 100,000 big ones. Step two, casino, 50,000. What a huge W. Next, I'd started working on getting all the parachute missions in the city to gold before working for the rest up north. And so it was said, so it was done. But then, I glanced over to chat and I saw a suggestion that on paper seemed fantastic, but oh boy. Was this the worst decision of the challenge so far? All right, fuck. You know what? We've been beating around the bush for too long. Fuck. We're gonna go OP. We're gonna go OP. Go work for OP, they said. It is totally legal, they said. 
to explain. When doing the OP missions, you get hired by the FIB in Los Santos. So you are operating as an agent for the government. So whatever task you must complete for them, however shady it might be, you at least have the correct paperwork to make sure you won't end up with a wanted level. Now, here's the problem. When doing an operation like the one in this mission we're about to do, you still cannot break any excessive laws. I mean, when driving from point A to B, there is no lawful reason to be speeding or driving through red lights, even if you work for the government. And that's where things get extremely painful. Eventually, we arrived, and now it is time to start clapping the butt cheeks. But you might notice something. The only weapon I legally acquired was the Raging Bull Revolver. And yes, prior to the old missions, I actually got my gun license and bought this particular pistol. And to give you a small taste on how that conversation went, the clerk gave out a little sigh. He was clearly getting tired of my shit already and then he said listen mister i'll be honest with you you do not look like someone who can handle a gun my advice would be to go back home and let us real soldiers fight this thing i slapped a counter with my open hand as hard as i could the clerk jumped backwards i leaned down to him shut up listen to me when i tell you something i am a soldier i fought in every single war since world war ii just ask anybody i was there on d-day i've been to berlin moscow tokyo beijing seoul kabul i have more combat experience than you can possibly imagine so just listen to me just once the fuck is <laughs> because i will tell you this only once there are no real soldiers left in America. We have been overrun by civilians. We are sitting ducks. And that is how it's always been in history. That is why we need guns. To protect ourselves from the people who want to kill us. Don't you understand? These are our neighbors. These are our friends. These are our loved ones who are out to get us. Jesus Christ. <laughs> What is, what is going on? But somehow I did receive a gun and the firearm license after that. But now it is go time. Clap cheeks downstairs, went up lift and died. Clap cheeks, went up lift, went up another lift. Clapped more cheeks and died. Checkpoint. Jumped off building, got stuck in traffic and died. Jumped off building, skydived all the way down to objective. Went upstairs and died. Checkpoint. Went up building, shot man, went down ladder, got stuck in traffic and died. Now believe me when I say... I I was overly pessimistic every death, but this one in particular felt like I would be stuck here. I can't outrun the NPCs and I can't outshoot them either. They keep respawning. I can't do anything. But then I remember the old wise words of a man in a security booth, the entrepreneur who reinvented train travel in Los Santos and that might just be the key to completing this. And thus, we went up building, shot a man, went down ladder, we crossed street legally, by the way, jaywalking is no longer against the law in Los Angeles. We went towards the Ellis River and this was it. The train. The train. The train is our answer here. The train is our answer here. Come on, clutch, clutch, clutch it. Clutch it, Evans, for once. Oh. Oh. Just like that, we made it on the train and we were on our way to safety. But we aren't in the clear just yet. This train will not take us all the way to the objective and as soon as we disembark, oh, they will be coming. It was here that we draw. Oh shit! It's not over yet. No 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 Stop giving chase! But it wasn't enough. We made it against all odds. And after one hour and 30 minutes of pain, suffering, agony, we made it. Oh my fucking god. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. Oh. I did it, but. What? Was it at what, what cost yet? <laughs> what cost?
We made 20k doing taxi jobs for like 30 minutes. Not even for like 20 minutes. Oh, you can go fuck yourself. We're never doing that. We're never doing that again. What a kick in the nuts. I was down in the gutter, but I remembered something. The business. I bought a business that could surely generate thousands upon thousands of dollars. But guess what? There's no way on God's green earth that you can complete the setup mission for the bar without breaking any laws. But maybe... Maybe we'll work on motorcycles for customers in our clubhouse. That can be done for an astronomical amount of cash. Day five was coming to an end. We are now 18 hours into a godforsaken challenge that I thought would only take eight hours tops. Today started great. So much so that it was exactly the same as the day before. Believe it or not, not only did I get another $100,000 for completing the last bit of the taxi challenge, I also hit another 50k on the wheel. We got no time to waste. Today was the day that I'll finish all the skydiving challenges, so we were on our way. And things are going absolutely fantastic today. Traffic is okay, we are seemingly zipping through the city, going from challenge to challenge to challenge making money and I am proud to say that we are nearly done with the skydiving but then a flare ladies and gentlemen we as GTA online players know exactly what this is but my character who hasn't broken a single law hasn't got a clue but I knew there was a metaphorical pot at the end of this journey but a risky one because if we get a wanted level after doing this or if novel AI decides we broke a law the challenge is over and in we went we went from flare to flare to flare and there in the sand a crate now my character is like uh what is this he picked it up and then helicopters start shooting he races off at completely legal speed shake the helicopters but no wanted level the only thing that remains to do here is we call the cops and ask them if it's okay for us to keep the money we just found or if we have to return it the officers laughed at me sonny we are not your mommy we don't care whether you kept the money or returned it it doesn't matter to us my mommy loves me and there we have it another twenty-five thousand. and before we continue our skydiving time to visit our pirate friend at the shipwreck now i don't want to a break the law and b more important break the trust that I've built up with my old Pirate King friend and thus I ask. Here we go again. Alright, so we have arrived here. Beautiful. And here we go again. I return to my old pirate friend Ghost and next to him in the sand a chest filled with glorious and shiny booty. Surely my pirate friend must have gotten that booty on one of his many voyages. So I looked at the pirate and I asked Hello old friend. How about ye share ye booty with ye old friend, eh? He you sure are a greedy little bugger, aren't you? The pirate replied. But why not? I've got an honest treasure here, and I'm just sitting here waiting for someone to come along so I can share it. That is the worst pirate accent ever, but hey, fucking hell. And thus, I received another 20,000. We kept the momentum up, and we worked on the final couple of skydives, and eventually... Boom. There we go, 100,000. Oh, big W. Boom. Another big one, honey K. We ended the night big by doing a few more taxi jobs to wind down. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that brought us up all the way to a grand total of $802,000. Now, before I carry on yapping about this challenge, I gotta make one thing perfectly clear. I was beyond done following traffic laws and all that nonsense. Right now, we are about 20 hours into this godforsaken challenge and we still got another 200,000 bucks left to go. But here, we finished a fight. Went to the casino first, had to wait another 15 minutes for the wheel spin. So instead of waiting around for that, we decided to head straight to the daily shipwreck. So you had to take the treasure. Well then, I'm afraid you'll have to answer my riddle first. I gulped. Riddles were hard. They make you think. All right. Here goes. How many teeth does a shark have? I looked at the Pirate King and I laughed. 350 teeth. I said with great confidence, the ghost frowned. Wrong, he said. How many legs does a spider have? I, I looked around and thought for a while. What kind of spider, I asked. A regular spider. 11, I exclaimed. No, nope, wrong again. 16, not even close. 24. Fantastic, you got it. Now go and take the treasure, the ghost said. <laughs> <laughs> 
I took the crap torch and went over him. <laughs> Good. We went back to the casino and... Fuck. <gasps> now the problem we're facing is we exhausted all the ways to legally make money. You see, we've picked up the movie props that we legally could like the one in the strip club and the casino and outside of the office, but we can't pick up the rest legally. We'd have to pit the ones driving around murder thieves and I don't think a movie director has the correct paperwork to make that a legal endeavor. To get the other collectibles like the playing cards, you'd have to loot, steal or trespass. So our options became paper thin. We could do taxi missions, we could do op missions or we become the best Formula 1 racer the city has ever seen. If we play the jobs that belong to the official job marker in the south of the city, that must be completely legal. But this will be a grind. We decided on 10 laps per round. This would take about 20 minutes. And only if we are in the top 3, this would be advantageous and would make more money than doing taxi jobs in the north. And so... So it began, race after race. We scored good, we scored great, but I was also five hours into this doing non-stop and quite frankly, I have reached my limit for this nonsense. But if my calculations are indeed correct, we should hit half a million dollars in the bank after this race. And if that is the case, we have completed the challenge. Oh, 22,000 chat. Oh. <sighs> All right. All right, Jet. Oh, let's just spark up and have a look, see. <sighs> and just like that, we made it. So, let's count all the money we've made. Right now, I've got $502,000 and some change. Add $210,000 for the MC business I bought. Add $80,000 for the house. Add $8,000 for the car. And lastly, the two times $100,000. That, ladies and gentlemen, that comes down to 1 million bucks and some change. And all of that in just over 25 hours of stopping at traffic lights. Pain, suffering, agony, and all that time. After a lot of reflection and looking inwards, I can truly and honestly say, we did it. And fuck this shit.